Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth. Hello again. Today, I would like us to consider the post-ascension appearances of Jesus and what these teach us about Jesus and our relationship with him. Firstly, I'm in full agreement with Archbishop Michael Ramsey, who says, John wishes us to understand that the ascension took place on Easter Day. That is, that Jesus had had already ascended to the Father before his appearance to the disciples in the upper room, but after his appearance to Mary Magdalene at the tomb. Let's recall the story again. Following his resurrection, the appearances of Jesus had become sporadic and unpredictable. This caused considerable frustration for the disciples. We'll read from John's Gospel, chapter 21, and verses 1 to 4. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat. And that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. In terms of their relationship to Jesus, the disciples were in a period of transition. As we look at the sequence of events, they were between the resurrection and the ascension of Jesus. The next recorded, recorded appearance of Jesus to his disciples is when he is taken up into heaven. Ascension Day was the last physical appearance of Jesus to his disciples. And as I read about the previous resurrection appearances, my understanding is that Jesus had already ascended to heaven. Archbishop Ramsey regards the ascension narrative in Luke's Gospel as a visible assurance to the disciples that the appearances were ended. Jesus had given proofs of his resurrection for 40 days. In the Bible, the number 40 is significant and refers to an adequate or sufficient time. There was no further need for Jesus to reveal himself in this way to the disciples. We have now moved into the age of the Spirit. So where did Jesus go? Well, yes, to heaven. Everyone knows that. But where is heaven? Tom Wright, in his book, Surprised by Hope, speaks of heaven as the thin curtain between God's space and ours. This gives an interesting dimension to the whereabouts of heaven. Yuri Gagarin, the first man in space, observed on his return to Earth that he had been to outer space and back and had not seen God. The same could be said for the Hubble telescope or the Voyager 2 spacecraft 
which is now well beyond the limits of our solar system. Even with the highest resolution cameras, there has been no visible proof of a divine being out there. Of course, he could be invisible to optical and digital technology, though strangely not to human eyes, to those to whom he chooses to reveal himself. I believe that heaven is much nearer than we think. As Paul said, quoting an ancient Greek poem, in him we live and move and have our being. We usually refer to heaven as being up in the sky. Well, space isn't up there. It's out there. Which is why we refer to it as outer space. So strictly speaking, space is all around us, not above. And that is where I believe heaven can be found. The preaching and teaching of Jesus was about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven has drawn near in the person of Jesus. He spoke about the kingdom of heaven, but also in him, the kingdom of heaven was present in the world. God's heavenly rule had invaded the here and now and day to day of humankind. The nearer we are to Jesus, the nearer we are to heaven. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You too can reach out to Jesus today. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow Because he lives, all fear is gone Because I know he holds the future And life is worth the living just because he lives Because I know Just because he lives